In this video we're going to go over a new project that I'm working on to create a closed finger joint box. But first take a moment just to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. What does that mean? So if we look here, this kind of box is a closed finger joint box. It's basically a box made with these joints between the sides and you can cut the top off and make the lid out of that so the lid would look something like one of these ones something like this and the idea is to be able to make that without much effort um, and make it any size you want so the laser closed box the CNC laser cuts them out like this looks pretty cool and what I want to be able to do is to make one that works for a CNC mill. So if we look here in Fusion, you can see um, we have a sketch. I've actually got a sketch going. I have gone into the edit sketch, so it's now the current sketch. And inside of the sketch, I can go to this tools menu, go to the add-ins, the scripts, and here I have my own script, it's called Create Finger Joint Box. Now it's not ready to go yet, it hasn't, I haven't completed it, but what I wanted to do is to show you how far I've got and then get some input. And we'll tell you that I'm using a reference on my finger joint box. This is the picture. Essentially, this is going to be the standard box. It's going to have two sides that are like these, two sides that are like this one and this one. And you can see the difference is this one has uh, tabs all the way around. So this one has um, the big square in the corners. So these boxes are going to fit together. Obviously, this edge here fits into this edge here. And then this one would fit into that edge over there. This would be the top part of that. And then this is the ends. So the ends are different again. If you look here, they have this big flat on them and then they have the tabs going all around. So that makes everything fit together nice and, and smoothly. Now what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to make them size for size. I'm not putting any clearance in. Eventually, of course, we're going to end up with a clearance that we can tune. Um, so we can say, hey, make these holes just a little bit bigger so that these tabs will go in them much easier. don't want to do that off the bat. I want to just uh, be able to cut out the, the box size for size and then just bang it together see what it looks like it's an iterative process so we have to take a little bit of time to get it done properly now if we go back into fusion I can just show you where we are um, the idea in fusion is when I run this in an open sketch it's going to draw the first side in that open sketch and it will create a model of that side so it'll actually model it to the, to the right size um, then it's going to create a new sketch and create the second type of side so there are, as you remember from this there are three types of sides so this is type 1 this is type 2 this is type 3 when you run the script it's going to ask you what size you want the length what size you want the width what size you want the height and then you'll be able to literally create the box that you want so I am going to show you how that works right now. We'll go into this uh, finger joint box script. And again, this is something I've written. Uh, I'll show you just briefly. This is the actual script. So here we go. So I run it. It asks me, what's the box length? So I tell it 12. I'm just going to accept all the defaults on this one. The box length is 12. The box width is 8. The box height is 8. The material thickness is going to be 0.5. That's how it's going to determine how long those fingers need to be because the, the fingers are going to be at least the material thickness. Um, I have a parameter in there to add a little bit extra if we want to do that so that we can sand them down once we put the thing together. Um, probably not a bad idea. Uh, number of tab tabs over the length, so I can choose that. I'm going to choose five in this case. And then the number of tabs over the width, I can choose that as well. So I'm going to choose three in this case. 
and then the number of tabs over the height. Of course, they have to remain consistent on the sides, or we're going to have tabs that don't fit with each other. So the difference between one side and the other is the tab offset. So this is how much the tabs should overhang, and I'm going to just choose zero at the moment because I don't want to complicate anything. So when I hit that, it's going to do some thinking about it. It's going to create the sketch, and it's created. So it's created a couple of things to start with. So sketch, this current sketch I can turn off, and then you can see that there's a body that it's created. If you look at that, that's the thickness of the material. This is the width. So if we put that in front view and we measure that, if I measure from here to here, that's the width that we put in. If I measure from here to here, that's the, I'm sorry, the first one was the length. This one is the height that I put in. And then we have the, the width also, which I also had at 80, so they're the same. Um, so this is the body of, of the uh, piece that it created. I'm going to turn that off and then go back to that sketch two. There's the sketch that it created. So it literally walked around the sketch, created all the points, joined the dots, and created that piece. And then in the second sketch, it started creating the piece with the longer arms here. Um, so this is the one with the square pieces. So if we look back at this, it's the ones with these pieces. That's the bit I haven't done yet. I'm just working on that right now. Okay, so those square pieces should go from here to here to here, back in by one height. So that's what they will look like when I've finished the script. It is a bit... Um, tricky to get the right settings to, to make the right pieces but it's just a matter of, of figuring that part out and so I'm working on that right now because I want to be able to do this automatically no matter what size you pick so uh, obviously everything has to be calculated so what about the dog bones so um, if we want this to fit together obviously if we're milling it what's going to happen is when you mill in this corner you're going to have the radius of the tool. So to make them go together, we need to use a dog bone. And actually, if you look at this one, you can see, if you look very closely, you can see there are dog bones actually in there, even with the laser, just to make the corners fit nicely. So in our case, because we have a solid part, there is an existing uh, add-in, which I have added already. Uh, that will allow us to do that. So if I stop this sketch, this is the add-in here. It's called dog bone. Or I literally am going to um, click on that, select a body, and then watch here. It's going to create a lot of. Um, it's going to create a lot of sketches. I'm not sure I like the way that it does it, but it works. So at least for now. That's going to be the solution. So I just put in my tool diameter. Um, the radio offset allows you to go in a little deeper than the tool if you like, but honestly, one eighth is going to be enough, one eighth inch or 3.175 millimeters. And then when I run this, the magic will happen. It'll just create all these uh, dog bones for us. So we won't have to do anything manually to create dog bones. Uh, I may do them in the script eventually, but right now, this works and we'll let it have at it. And you can see all the sketches that it's making. It's actually creating a lot of um, geometry so that you can put all these dog bones in. And then when it's finally finished, what we're going to have is a dog bone in every corner. It's actually uh, it's creating so many sketches, it's run off my list. That's the bit I don't like about it. There's a lot of artifacts that are here, and I'm not sure I'm 100% comfortable with that. However, it already works, and it's a lot of programming to do that. So I don't know that I want to 
do that off the bat. Like I said, I'm just trying to get the basic shape first. And there we have it. So it, it's done as advertised, created dog bones. So now those, we'd be able to get a square peg into that hole without any interference and we can machine it flat. So the idea is we're going to machine it like that. So that would all work. So unfortunately, I think we ran out of time a little bit. I, I was going to show you some more stuff, but I didn't want the video to go on too long. So if you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching.